How much straight run of pipe do you need for an ultrasonic flow meter? And what is the effect if you don't have enough? Coming up next, flow hydraulics and their effect on ultrasonic flow meters on our tech review. Welcome to another edition of Instruments Direct Tech Review. Today, we're going to review the flow hydraulic requirements for most ultrasonic clamp-on transit time flow meters and their effect if you don't have enough straight run of pipe. But first off, for our new visitors who don't even know what an ultrasonic transit time flow meter is, well, it's, it's a flow meter device for liquid applications that clamps on the outside of the pipe, sends an ultrasound into the pipe so you can monitor flow rate and total. And yes, it's in the, the way cool category of flow meter tools. Well, for my younger audience, it's an awesome flow meter. So, how does an ultrasonic flow meter work? Well, an ultrasonic flow meter, as we said, is a clamp-on device. And as you can see from the picture on the screen right now, we have two transducers that are strapped on the outside of the pipe. And the first sensor on the left sends a sound burst across the pipe ricochets off the back wall to the transducer on the right-hand side, and we measure how long it took to transit across the pipe. The second transducer sends a sound beam across the pipe, but it's going against the flow, kind of like running against the headwind, and guess what? It takes a longer period of time. So the differential between the two different transit times is the coefficient we use to calculate flow rate. So the faster the flow rate, the greater the differential. We have different types of configurations based upon the pipe size. The picture on the top is called the V configuration or the dual path. We usually use that in pipe sizes, say half inch to 24 inches. And the picture on the lower right, that's called the Z or the single path, where we use that usually for larger pipe sizes. An ultrasonic flow meter is nothing more than a big math equation. As you can see, the, the math on the left-hand side there, basically, the technology, though, has moved to a point so it's so easy to work. All you need to do is program your flow meter for your specific pipe and liquid applications, and it tells you where to put the transducers on the pipe. And it comes in all different shapes and sizes and configurations with a wide variety of different manufacturers, as you can see on the screen right now. So. Flow hydraulics can be kind of interesting. As you come inside a building, they're all over the place, and sometimes you don't have the required straight run of pipe. Every technology has a certain set of specifications, and so does an ultrasonic transit time flow meter. So, step one, we need to know why we have to have a uh, so much straight run of pipe. So in this case there, we start off with something which is called a symmetrical flow profile. And a symmetrical flow profile, if you look at this cutaway drawing, is basically uh, the center of the flow is faster than the flow near the sides of the pipe because they're grabbing on with a little friction. Much like a, a motorboat going down a river, see the weight cast out to the side there? These different elliptical shapes are called Reynolds numbers, and they vary between blunt and elliptical, more pointed, but basically they're still always fastest to the center, slowest near the pipe wall. This beautiful flow profile is, uh, occurs when you have the required straight run of pipe. So if you were to draw a center line down this pipe, the top half of flow it would equal the bottom half of flow. So this type of situation normally occurs when we have about 10 pipe diameters before, or excuse me, 10 pipe diameters after an elbow and five pipe diameters before the nest obstruction. So on the left-hand side of the picture, we'll have an elbow move 10 pipe diameters, put our flow sensor there, and have, have another five pipe diameters on the other side before the next obstruction. This is where you'll get your optimum performance on your ultrasonic flow meter. Now the opposite of that is called an asymmetrical flow profile. And an asymmetrical flow profile basically means you don't have enough straight run of pipe. So as a diagram you see before you, if you were to mount the center right after that elbow, it's pretty turbulent and jibbly jobbly inside the pipe there. So basically, the transducer wouldn't work very well or not at all and may actually fault out. So as you move farther downstream, you see the flow profile straightens out there. So when you have an obstruction like this particular application, 
Uh, you go downstream from the elbow, 10 pipe diameters, put your center there, and five before the next situation. So here is a perfect installation. As I said, the transit time technology is a math equation, so we know before we even start to play the game where the transducers are going on the pipe. We program our flow meter for a 10-inch carbon steel pipe with water, and it will tell us what the spacing is of our transducers. So it's expecting where the signal will come out uh, across the pipe. So in this case here, we go and turn our flow meter on, we install the sensors correctly, and the sensor goes from the sound beam goes from one sensor to the other, and then we get our signal. Uh, everything's perfect, accuracy is great. Now, what do we do? What if we didn't have enough straight run of pipe? Well, if we don't have enough straight run of pipe, you can see the flow profile might be a little off-centered there, it may not be perfect. We may not get the optimum flow uh, prof profile that we're looking for, and we may not even get a signal. Because you see the path, as you can see, wander downstream there, so in order for us to actually catch that signal, we may have to move our transducer to the new position there. But if we do that, we are going outside the math equation, and therefore we may not get our optimum performance or accuracies on the flow meter. Uh, so as you can see, the effect is if you don't have enough straight run of pipe, you may have to go outside the, bike, the box to get a reading. Now, what if we had a situation where we had short run of pipe and a wide varying flow? Well, then the flow profile can be all over the place there, and you may be able to get flow in the morning, come back to the same spot and not get flow in the afternoon. That's because the flow profile change, and therefore the point of injection uh, across the pipe and the reception on the other side could actually be different. So lack of straight run of pipe can cause different flow profiles, which can cause different uh, installation points if you have to profile the transducer there, which could affect the overall accuracy of the device. Now, what if we had an application with lots of aeration? A transit time flow meter traditionally works with no suspended solids, unlike a Doppler flow meter, and you basically need oh, ultra pure liquid, uh, sewage, but not sludge. Most clamp-on ultrasonic transit time flow meters tend to work for around ultra-pure liquids up to about 2% suspended solids as a generic statement. Now, if you put this on an application with lots of aeration, look at that. The beam circuit is broken. So if you have lots of chunks of stuff or lots of aeration, a transit time flow meter can have some problem with the flow hydraulics and get no reading at all. Now, here we've installed the two transducers in the V configuration or the dual path situation here, and the same thing applies. So you can see the perfect symmetrical flow profile. We put the transducers where they're supposed to be. The gazenta equals the gazada. Then we have their differential, and we monitor flow properly. But lack of straight run of pipe. In this case there, we have a poor flow profile. Guess what happens? We may lose the signal and we'll have to prospect to actually find the signal. So again, you might get it to work and probably after five o'clock, I just want to get a reading. That's when you do that. But that's not the way to get the optimum performance with an ultrasonic transit time flow meter. So if you open up the manual with every manufacturer, they'll say, give me a mile of straight run of pipe. Well, we're not wearing little white lab coats, so we have to deal with in the field. So very difficult many times to find just the required 15 pipe diameters at flow rates are at around 10 feet per second. Higher the flow rates, you need more straight run of pipe. Lower the flow rates, and you can get by with a little less straight run of pipe. And if you're installing the flow meter, the flow hydraulics also play a role if the pipe has to be full. And if you have the choice of installing a transducer, 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock are probably not the best locations. Horizontal pipe, uh, anywhere you can see in the side there from 1 to 5 o'clock is probably the best location. Vertical pipe really doesn't make that much difference there. And what are you going to do if you have a bad application? This picture here says time to walk away. You really have nothing there to monitor flow. The only thing you can do is bring out the old backhoe and dig out some pipe and uh, get your straight run of pipe requirements there. If you can't work in this particular application, then all you can do is go upstream and hunt downstream looking for more 
straight run of pipe. And occasionally you'll get in these other applications or some of the big box stores, you'll have these fancy blue or red connectors there and they really do a nice job there. But the problem is the way they connect these connectors to the pipe itself, sometimes they ferrule the end of the pipe and it makes a very disruptive flow profile. So we said the 10 to 15 pipe diameters is based upon elbow to elbow. If you have something more disruptive, then you're going to need more straight run of pipe. So if you see this kind of connector, you will have to go farther downstream to get away from the turbulence that it's causing to get your symmetrical flow profile. And then even some applications where you have to go get a ladder, you got to get a catwalk, you need to prep the pipe. And if you have an insulated pipe, you have to remove the installation. So finding a good application sometimes takes a little more effort than actually installing the ultrasonic transit time flow meter on your application. And then even if you go out in the field there, again, uh, some of the installation or insulation can be very problematic there and you may require a specialist to prep the pipe for you, such as this uh, process control installation here. Uh, they may have metal insulation on the outside of the pipe or they have the pretty insulation on the outside of the pipe. So walk through your application and if there's some preparatory work to get ready so you can get on the pipe, get that done beforehand there and save you a lot of time and labor there. So, when you're in the field, the first thing you need to do is scope out your application there and decide where you're going to put your transducers on the pipe. Locate your pipe, a total footprint of about 15 diameters between elbow, and you'd go downstream about two-thirds of that available footprint, and that's where you would put your transducers. If you don't have the required straight run of pipe, which of course happens all the time, then the only next rule of thumb is to go downstream two-thirds of the available footprint, whatever it is, put your sensor there and, uh, and hope for the best. That's the best thing you can do in the short run of pipe applications is use that kind of ratio there to see if you have at least enough straight run of pipe to try to get a signal. Uh, program your meter the right way and then install the meter in the pipe and away you go. So, in summary, flow hydraulics can have an effect on the accuracies and flow meter performance. Take note of your straight run of pipe and adjust accordingly. If you don't have enough straight run of pipe, go down the stream two-thirds the available footprint and put your sensor there. Try to investigate the best you can before you go install your flow meter there. And of course, as you saw from the, the PowerPoint presentation, if you don't have enough straight run of pipe, sometimes you actually have to bring out the backhoe, dig up some pipe to get your straight run pipe requirement. Thank you for watching our program today. For more information on our subjects, check out the show notes list and links listed below. And as always, we would appreciate any comments or suggestions of technology for our tech review program. This has been Brent Baird for Instruments Direct. See you next time.